Hello everyone, this is Jenny Gibbons of Woodsy Studio, and today I'm going to tell you how to launch scenes using the visual novel framework that I created for Unreal Engine 4. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to use um, a project uh, that I'm currently working on, um, our next big game at Woodsy Studio, called Crimson Spires. Okay, so here in our project, I've got one of our maps pulled up. Um, I already have some touch click actors in it and some, some cameras set up, but I'll still show you how to um, launch a fresh scene. Um, so there are a few different ways to do it. The most like brute force way to do it, like for instance, this might be how you launch your very first scene, um, just purely through blueprints. Um, let's do it through the level blueprint for demonstration. So you could do something um, like we'll just use the event begin play here. What you'll want to do is reference the global BP. So we're going to say get game instance and then we're going to cast to the global VP. And the global VP in this framework is um, just the game instance we use that has a lot of code and variables all set up in it to work with the framework. All right, so as the global VP, we're going to set the current scene. And so every scene that you um, make in the visual novel framework needs to have a nickname and it can be whatever you want. So for this, let's just say uh, Church Julian. That's the scene I'm going to make. So well, first I'll tell you what to do with this nickname here. So when you have a nickname for your scene, what you want to do is put that scene nickname in your master scene list. And you can find that in, let me find it here, um, in your scenes folder. I have a lot of scenes specific to my project here, but in the framework, you, you should be able to find DT main scenes. And this is where you can just keep a huge list of all the scenes in your game. Um, if you ever wanted, you could make additional lists to reference as you want, but uh, so far I've just been using it for all of our scenes. So you'd press this plus button to make a new row. So we're calling this scene Church Julian. So I'm going to make that the row name. So the nickname is the row name, and it's also what we're setting as the current scene in the global VP. Then we need to tell it what data table to play. Um, for this, this is just specific to what I'm, I'm working on at the moment. It's this one right here, scene 17. So I'm going to drop that in um, here to the data table for uh, that row. All right, so that is what we need to do really just to define the scene. Now we're going to go back to this blueprint for our level. Um, we set the current scene and then we're going to say force start scene. Oh, this actually just repeats it. So there you go. So this again, this is the most brute force way. So as soon as we press play, it um, starts that scene with all the code intact and starts to play. So that's the most brute force way, but probably you're not, you're generally not going to be calling scenes this way. You want the player to call them maybe when they interact with something or you want one scene to follow another scene. So um, what you can do is create a touch click actor to trigger a scene within the game. And if you go to, I have to excuse all my other folders here, go to your blueprints folder, go to touch click BPs. I've got all these B, uh, touch click BPs I've already created. Um, but if you want to create your own, you right click on the touch click actor BP, create a child blueprint class. I'm just going to go ahead and name this Julian click BP. All right, and we'll open that up. So by default, um, the touch click BP is uh, going to be empty because some the the very base one just has a lot of code. Um, but you can have a character show up here. There's already some variables here for you to use. So there's the body sprite. So I've navigated to where I keep a sprite for Julian in the world to show up. It's pretty small. 
I'm probably going to make a higher resolution one at some point just so it looks a little better in the world. But I'm just going to drop that in as the source sprite. I'm going to make sure it's visible. Yep, uh, visible there. Hidden in game. No, okay, that's good. So it's going to show up. All right, so now I'm going to go back to my touch click BP folder. And we're going to try dragging this in the world here. All right, so he's going to show up in the world. And because he's a, a sprite that we don't want to look 2D, I'm going to um, make sure that he rotates to face the camera. So turn that off. Okay, so now he will show up here, and he'll rotate to face the camera, but nothing happens when we click on him. That's because we haven't set up a scene to play, so nothing at all is happening. So in order to set that up, we're going to go back to the touch click BP actor we made. We're going to go to the event graph. Right now it's just inheriting a whole bunch of code from the touch click actor BP. But we want to overwrite a very specific function. And to do that, we're going to go here to the functions and we're going to press override. So there are a lot of functions here, so you have to find it. But the one we want is called pick local scene. So here it is. I'm going to overwrite that. I actually don't need to inherit anything here. I'm just going to create my own new code. So here's where we can. Um, tell this touch click BBP what scene we want to play. So again, the most brute force thing we can do here is just enter the nickname. So it was Church Julian. And that's it. We've told it what scene we want to play uh, with the nickname. So now when we test it out, here he is. We go up, we click, and the scene plays. All right. And there are a few different things you could do to have him show up a little bit better if you wanted. You could, uh, let's see, let's have him add a special effect here called Fade In Sprite. So right now I said Fade In. He's going to Fade In. Excellent. That looks better. But we can also just take out his spawn code entirely. Set these to zero. And because we've uh, clicked on spawn character and we go and tell it that we want it to spawn Julian, then when you click on him, it'll actually go ahead and spawn him for you. So that's a nice little feature that's, uh, that's already set up for you in the touch click actor. All right, so that's another way to launch a scene. And uh, most likely as you're getting into the nitty gritty of um, your game, you're going to want to have a lot of conditions with these. So what you can do is just pull up the global VP variable. That's already something the touch click actor knows. So you can just reference it by typing it in. You want to reference the master choice log, which tracks all the choices you make in the game. And for this example, like I only want this scene to play if uh, you've not seen it before. So there is a choice here in this scene, um, and it's choice 14. So what I can do is I can get 14, get a reference, number 14. I can say equals zero. So if that's true, I want the scene to play. But if it's not true, in other words, um, I've seen that scene before, we're just going to have it be blank so that no, no scene gets triggered. So let's see what that looks like. I go in here, I launch the scene, I make a choice here. Julian liked my decision. I'm going to skip through. All right, so scene's over. Now I can't trigger another scene. I can try, but it won't trigger. And that's because 
I added that code to make sure it'll only trigger once. Okay, so while I'm here showing you how to trigger scenes, I do want to show you another option that's available in uh, the visual novel framework I've made. Um, in case you have a lot of custom code you want with a scene, if you go to your master scene list here, you'll see that at the very end there's an option for custom code. Um, it's a Boolean and by default it's, it's false. Um, but you can set that to true and that will change how the scene triggers and allow you to add a lot of custom code. So if we open up the touch click actor BP here, the, the main parent, and you take a look at all the code that happens here when a scene is launched. Uh, here is the code that normally runs for each scene. Here's where you override the pick local scene so you give it a nickname to process. And here we go into breakdown scene which is the main code that it runs to um, build a scene out of the data table and all the information that's on um, your DT main scene list. But if it does that and it finds that there's custom code, you can go up here to, uh, to true and it runs this custom scene, scene code function. So an important thing to note here is that when you do custom scene code, uh, because it's giving you a lot of freedom of how to build the scene, it's not going to do the normal build full scene. Um, you'll need to run that yourself within your custom code along with whatever else you want to do. And that's because there are situations like the reason I use it is if I have a scene that, that um, might, I might even build a scene with two different data tables based on certain conditions and I just want to have that freedom in the custom code. Uh, but if you mark that to true and then you don't build a full scene, then it won't run. So just know that that's there. If you want to use it, you could add all sorts of other code you want to process here. So that's really all you need to know in order to launch your scenes using the Visual Novel Framework. If you'd like to learn more about my own projects and how I use this code, check out my uh, Patreon, patreon.com, um, woodsy, woodsy underscore studio. Uh, where my partner and I give weekly updates on our development process as we continue to make our own visual novels in Unreal Engine 4. Thanks again for watching and good luck creating!